Uh, let's get back to matters uh, sports we were having a couple of conversations and now you we shall be heading into the second conversation of the day uh, based off of um, something quite well magnificent that happened over the weekend as we all know uh, Kenya uh, qualified for the FIBA Afro Basketball Championship uh, 2021 edition after well after 28 years so maybe obviously you cannot get someone from the Murans and um, you know to speak on it but we are going to be having a conversation with one of the best uh, basketball coaches in Kenya and maybe he should tell us he should start by telling us why he was you know he was not in Cameroon himself. Um, speaking of none other than Humphrey Mugendi, thank you very much, Humphrey. Um, so maybe, yeah, maybe you can start by telling us why you were left behind. <laughs> uh, thank you, Richard. Um, I have to say, you know, we have uh, our, we call, uh, we call it, um, what do I say? Mm -hmm. We have our own uh, decisions to make. Mm -hmm. And um, the Moran's story is a story for all of us as Kenyans, and there are those people who are part of that glory. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't believe in to becoming part of the glory that I was not. Mm -hmm. I would rather be part of the glory as a Kenyan mm -hmm. than to be there and then you're like, you jumped into a moving ship. <laughs> so I personally, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a number one fan of Kenyan Moran. <clears throat> True. And every one of them did their best to make us proud. So. Whether I'm in Cameroon, I'm in Kenya, Morans, they have my support. They have your support. Yes. Indeed. Um, <laughs> I was about to say something. <laughs> they say in, uh, something they say out there in popular culture, they say, it's so <laughs> Too modest, but I get it. Okay. Uh, now, of course, maybe for Kenyans, it's a big step maybe, and for you as a basketball, former basketball player, basketball coach, a shareholder um, in the you know, basketball sports as a, as a discipline, what does that win? What does Kenya earning that qualification to the Afro Basketball Championship mean to you? It's a big win for Kenya, mm -hmm. and um, especially not only for Kenya, but for our zone. Mm -hmm. According to the FIBA zones, we are zone five. Mm -hmm. So zone five, it's, it's, um, it, it, it's, we, we can boast about it because we have Egypt, who have already qualified, South Sudan qualified, Kenya qualified, Uganda qualified. So out of the teams in the zone, mm -hmm. Even Rwanda has qualified. We have five teams in the Afro exactly. in the Afro finals. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as a country, we at least now we are making our we are making our steps back to basketball. And um, I have to say, this crop of players, we need to appreciate them. After 28 years, that's a whole generation, mm -hmm. and whatever they have done for this country. It, it will remain to be the history in this country because we beat Egypt in one of the qualifiers. We've never beaten Egypt in any team sports. Angola is one of the powerhouses in Africa. We beat them on Saturday. And uh, I have to say, Taylor um, is, is a guy that I, I, the president needs to honor him because that <laughs> last basket for those who don't know, Tyler Ngwa is the one who scored that last basket the against last Angola basket. to take Kenya through, of course. The top. Yeah, the last basket was, was not only the last basket, but the play itself. I don't think the coach called the play, but Taylor being a professional player, I have to say, <laughs> is a player that you need in a team. Yeah. And whoever he plays for, he must be so proud of him. Mm -hmm. So we as Kenyans, we are proud of you, Taylor. That's a big player when it comes to, you know, such moments, as you say, it's hard really to, you know, pinpoint that play to the coach. That comes down to the individual, of course. You have to take a risk. Yeah. And he took it. Exactly. And it paid off. Exactly. <laughs> now moving on, of course, how do you think they're going to base off the, of course, rankings and, you know, seedings for moving forward? Mm -hmm. uh, seeding, that is one of the biggest nightmare. Mm -hmm. After losing yesterday, uh, we, we put ourselves in a very awkward position, but uh, we cannot blame them uh, because, one, everybody who saw the game on Saturday, this game was not an easy game. Mm -hmm. And given the time that they played and the, the time that they played, the last game they played in Mozambique, 
there was very little time to 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 have enough rest. Yeah, true. And being a being a qualifier, you don't have time for rest. So mm -hmm. it's a matter of um, how good your players are mentally and how good um, you have a technical bench. I'm not I'm not saying we don't have a good technical bench. Neither am I saying we have a bad uh, a bad team. Yeah. The thing is. Um, all that went down, we got ourselves in a very awkward position, but we have qualified. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, in terms of seeding, we will end up in a very difficult group. We'll either find ourselves in uh, either Nigeria, <coughs> who are highly ranked, Tunisia, yeah. are also highly ranked. Mm -hmm. So we'll, uh, we, we just wait for the seeding. But it will not be an easy pull. Mm -hmm. Moving forward. Yeah, moving forward. Uh, and of course, um, sorry to go back to yesterday's game, but uh, then again, as you said, there was little time to prepare since we had played on Saturday and then we were playing, you know, the last game on Sunday, which we had already qualified, yes. Uh, but as for those who were watching that game, there was a certain, let's say, impatience exhibited by our players. Do you think that is to blame for how that game went down? Of course. Not that, you know, it was obviously a good win for us on Saturday. We are through. Uh, but then again, do you think that's something that they should work on moving forward? Especially that now, as you just said, when it comes to the seating, we're going to be in a tough position. I've been a coach and I'm, I'm still a coach. And I know, um, I know the players. The players can get the coach in a very difficult position. Um, I'm not saying that that is what they did, but I'm sure these players, they had at the back of their mind that we are going for two wins. We are supposed, we won the first win in the first round of qualifiers. This is the final round of qualifiers. Mm -hmm. We just need a win. Mm -hmm. So they were so sure that they can beat Mozambique. Because they have done so before. Yeah, because, Not so long ago, actually. Yes, <laughs> we beat Mozambique in Kigali. Yeah. So they were so sure they would beat Mozambique. For us to beat Angola, though, that was a big plus. So they were so confident that they will beat Mozambique. And Mozambique, on the other side, they did not want to leave the qualifier. They all, they, all they knew the they were out, but zero yeah. without any win. So they had to get their win. So they put their focus on beating Kenya. As on the other side, we were so confident that we'll beat Mozambique. So our confidence, overconfidence, that is what that punished that costed us losing the game yesterday. Mm -hmm. Not the coaching, not the players, but our overconfidence. Which happens. Which happens to players. Yeah. So we cannot blame them. It's part of the game and a lot of things happen in sports. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was actually Kenya's first win against Angola, so it's, it's quite... Uh, actually, I feel like I was, you know, you understand how it, yeah. <laughs> how it feels like in that situation. Uh, but then again, let's get back to, um, let's talk about the technical bench. How do you think they're able uh, to make that team gel so quick? As, considering those players, uh, most of them are professional players who, most of them don't even play here in our local leagues. So what is it about this team and this technical bench that has actually enabled them to be able to, you know, gel that team in, sh in such a short time, really? for such a huge tournament, a huge task? Jelling is part of the team, uh, but I believe in, uh, if you're a professional player, mm -hmm. you know at the back of your mind, the peak of your career is playing for your national team. So when you get a call up, you, com you, you give your all so that you're in the final squad. So jelling up is very important. But being professional players, what we need to do is we have the window when we, we, when we can play the national, the, the games, mm -hmm. the, 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 the Afro itself. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure by the time that time comes, mm -hmm. we, will have, we will have a break. They will have breaks from, the intern, from their leagues. So what we need to do is we need to have them come immediately so that we can have enough time. Mm -hmm. The local best players, what we need to do is we need to, to have a day <coughs> whereby all the local best players who are in the team and who we, who we think can make in the call-up can have a training once a week so that we can continue, we can have continuity of the Morans. We don't have to break the co continuity of the Morans. Yeah. So, um, and again, I think our federation, 
is an able federation. The chairman has been a coach of basketball. The treasurer is a coach of basketball. They still coach basketball at high school level. Coaching at high school level, at national level, basketball is basketball. So I'm sure those are the nitty gritties that they need to do, and I'm sure they will do it. Okay. Yeah. Now speaking on the game, of course we started off on a bad note, uh, the first two matches. Uh, but then again, watching all those matches, including our win on Saturday, and then our loss yesterday to Mozambique, unfortunately, what can you say moving forward the team needs to work on most? On, uh, on Friday, we lost to Senegal. Mm -hmm. To me, that, is, that was a loss, but comparing to the first round that we played in Kigali, mm -hmm. we lost by 34 points. Mm -hmm. On, on Friday, we lost by 18. So it, we see this progression in terms of playing against the big guys. Remember, Senegal is top 10 ranked, and we are 115. So considering the, the rankings, we, we, we did, we are making steps, mm -hmm. 34, 18. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, again, Seeing that we had, when we lost 34 points, we, we had another coach. Now we have another coach. So we also need to give the technical bench some time because the players are still the same. Yeah. We need to give the technical bench some time so that she can understand the players and the players can understand her so that the, 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 the systems that she wants to use in the team can, can, can be compatible to the team. Okay. Yes. And now since you've spoken about the just ending competition um, a lot, uh, but not moving forward, you did mention something about maintaining this Moran team. And for you as a coach, do you think we are taking the right steps in ensuring, you know, continuing the succession of the team? Because if this is not the best time to build on, you know, our quality and the level at which you're competing when it comes to basketball, then I don't know of another better opportunity. So maybe, do you think you're on the right track with what you're doing even with other local players and even you know, the programs that we have when it comes to mentoring kids to you know, get into basketball? Um, basketball is, uh, I can tell you basketball is a, it's, it's next to football. Mm -hmm. So many players, so many young players, if they don't play football, they play basketball all over the, the estates, you will find them playing basketball. Either with a basketball or with something else. So what you need to do is, and um, I, 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 commend, <coughs> I commend the bringing of this young man called Joel which is a young man, he's 25 years. So we have, we, have, uh, we, we are starting to, to, to do what we, we call development and uh, transition of the Morans. Uh, Joel Lowich is a young player, Taylor is still young, Ronin Gundo is still young. So these three players, um, uh, no, we have Taylor Lowich, Ronin Gundo, mm -hmm. and then we have Preston Bungay. Mm -hmm. This could be the pillars of transition of this team. Remember, Griffith is 35 years. I'm, I have so much respect for Griffiths. He, he is a great player and he has been the pillar of the team. Desmond has given his all in the team in terms of player, so many things that we know he does behind the scenes. And so it is up to the federation, the technical bench and the basketball stakeholders that we start transitioning the team slowly. We, we, if you remember that when the Moran started the name started coming up. There is that the African that we played in Mali. Yeah, we can use the African for the local best players. We can get the local best players to play to play in the African. Mm. Then from the African, we can transit the good players that we see can replace mm -hmm. players in the Morans. And now the, the Morans can be in the transition. They can transit, and others can come in. So, as a federation. And I'm happy the Federation is listening to the stakeholders and uh, we are working closely with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure some of them are watching right now and they will take the notes and they will do what is necessary. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> another, another exemplary thing witnessed over the weekend of brother over uh, this period of qualifiers, um, there is another topic that has been, you know, that is being discussed recently. It's about the coach. Les Mills, very 
well, she has managed to help this team qualify, of course. And I want to speak about what impact that has on, you know, basketball coaches like yourself, of course, whereby she she is totally, you know, her credentials are... I'm, I'm trying not to take away anything from anyone in this perspective. I'm sure you do understand. Yes, yes. Yeah. But I, I want to talk about the, the pressure or the motivation that the fact that she has managed to take this team to the championship, to the championship finals after 28 years, maybe what kind of pressure or motivation does that bring on local coaches, especially like, like yourself, really? Um, I have to say that uh, the current breed of players of, of Morantz, anyone who has a knowledge of basketball can take them to the Afro, to the Afro qualifiers. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the only aspect that is needed is the technicality. Mm. You see, that's another platform. Exactly. And um, I've been following Liz and uh, in terms of statistics, she's very good. So that is one thing that we as local player, as local coaches in the field of basketball, that mm -hmm. we, in, in the local arena, we don't have statistics. I remember when, when all the pools were ready, we have one of our bloggers who was saying, ah, this group will top this group because uh, blah, 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 you know, as a blogger's talk. Yeah. But, but Liz was there mm -hmm. giving statistics and everybody rubbished release. But she knew what she was talking about. So what I can say is we need to learn from her. As a coach, you are, you are a student mm -hmm. throughout. Until the day you stop coaching, you stop becoming a student. Yeah. So you learn from everyone. So whatever Liz has, has brought, it's, it's not competition to the local coach, but it's, it's, she's trying to make, to improve our coaching abilities and our coaching te te uh, techniques. In terms of, in basketball, there is this thing we call statistics. Mm -hmm. We need to keep statistics of our players. Yeah. That is what she's, she has brought here. And for me, I have to say, I congratulate her for mm -hmm. history. She's the first lady to make history to, to, uh, to coach a national team and take them to Afro. Okay. Congratulations, Liz. Okay. You yeah. see, nowadays, um, we, are always, uh, we always aim at making sure that both men's teams and women's team are on the same level of competition. And everything, every chance, every opportunity, even in terms of infrastructure, all that, that is what even the Federation has been working on uh, for the last few years. Uh, but then again, let's talk about, once again, the motivation or what this means uh, for not only uh, women coaches in basketball, but also, you know, women players. Because even most women's teams are actually coached by men. They do understand my point. Yes. <laughs> so maybe this uh, for, for Kenya is this going obviously to work out as a, as an advantage for because we have most very good teams here in Kenya uh, women's team basketball but how do you think what do you think this means for them for Liz to become the first you know woman coach to actually take the men's team uh, to the championship finals what I can say is um, first of all I have to tell women they should love one another. They should? They, love they should one love one another. Mm -hmm. Because women, they, I'm, I'm telling you from a point of coaching view, mm -hmm. women will listen to a male coach more than a female coach. Mm -hmm. Point of experience. I've been coaching women, and there was a time that I was an assistant coach, a female was, an, was a head coach, and the women say, no, we want him to be the head coach. So in terms of, uh, of coaching, mm -hmm. I think if women change their perspective of their fellow women coaches, then we'll be, we will move ahead. Mm -hmm. But we cannot force it on them. Yeah. It's up to them to make that decision. Why is that the case, really? Because if you, look at, if you look at men, we are, men are good being coaching, be coached by men or women. We accept anyone who becomes a coach. But for women, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can get a female coach, she can, she can tell us why is that. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Maybe she gets leaves when she gets back. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, back on um, the issue of, of course, ensuring that this line, this success, uh, that we have even teams that even if they won't perform as good as the current Moran uh, setup is, a uh, setup here in Kenya, the local leagues, the competition that you witness personally as a coach, do you think that that is sufficient moving forward? And if not, what do we need to, you know, tweak a bit, fix a few things to actually be on the right track? I'll address three things mm -hmm. for the local leagues. Mm -hmm. First of all, media. Mm -hmm. Our media, we focus so much mm -hmm. on the international sports mm -hmm. instead of local sports. Mm -hmm. That makes our sports not to have um, impact because uh, every Kenyan, if not every Kenya, 70% of Kenyans watch EPL. Mm -hmm. um, basketball circles, some of us wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning to watch <laughs> NBA. <laughs> Um, and if we have a game on TV, Gormaya versus FC, I personally cannot name even a single player in the Gormaya and the FC team. Mm -hmm. So if our media can come up with something uh, that they will, they will focus, as uh, the Communications Authority of Kenya says, we need to have local content. Mm -hmm. Even sports, even when you look at sports, if you look at the news in Kenya, sports we get five minutes. Mm -hmm. Even five minutes is a lot of time. And in the five minutes, it's... And then, oh, Manchester United beat us and all. That's the main news. So, in terms of media, we need to start... We, we need to start engaging our local leagues. Mm -hmm. No matter how shambolic they are, mm -hmm. they are. I'm mm. not saying that charity begins at home. <laughs> True. So, the media, I put a challenge to you, all of you, local, private, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Second thing is, mm -hmm. we need to invest in sports. Mm -hmm. Federations, government, we need to invest in, in sports. Mm -hmm. Whereby, instead of saying, using these young people, as the politicians do, giving them wheelbarrows and the rest, we need to put their energy where it's productive. And where is that? Those young people, I'm sure some of them play something, football, volleyball. If you just go mitani, jodi, jodi, you'll find them playing something. Let us put, channel their energy mm -hmm. where it's more productive. Mm -hmm. That is in terms of government and federations. Okay. Our companies, corporate world, they have something that they call CSR. The CSR, we don't see it. And if some of them want to sponsor something, mm -hmm. they put it on golf. Mm -hmm. Golf, can you name for me one player who I'm tiny and I just have golf? But that, com that comes down to other factors too. You need to appreciate, you need to acknowledge that. Yes, I, I acknowledge that. I know that our federations are not accountable. Mm -hmm. All of them, not basketball alone. Football, every federation, we have issues of accountability. So, as I was saying, with, I was talking with Wahome before the show, I say, it's up to the corporate world to decide. Mm -hmm. You see, if you look at the NBA, uh, you see there are those companies that come and sponsor teams, even EPN. They don't engage with the, with the FA, they engage directly with the team. The teams. So you engage the team, get some of their players, train them on how to use the money and how to account for, for, the, for that money. That way, if one company comes in, other companies will see. And if companies come in, then media will have to do some coverage yeah because i cannot put my hundred million somewhere and it's not seen it has to be seen yes publicity so if we, if we talk about those three aspects and we we work in tandem with the three of them i'm sure our sports will go somewhere yeah. and our competition will rise which means we'll have foreign based players because we can pay them not because we are bringing foreign based players because our players are not good enough we are bringing these foreign based players to make our players compete 
and up their game so that they can be able to get that spot the foreign base player was brought. Okay. In that way, Morans will have players from the local teams playing for the Morans. Okay. Yes. As a stakeholder in basketball, in the sports um, industry in Kenya, mm, my last question will be based off of something that you've mentioned because these are conversations that people have been planning on having but we never do, meaning there's no, you know, there's no way we can move forward if the conversation, conversations are not had. So lastly, I want you to tell me where, of course, where does the, let's say, the, not really the blame, really. We're talking about how everyone involved can work together to make it, you know, a reality. The fact that we're promoting our sports here in Kenya. But then again, what is the Federation's role in all this? And also stakeholders like yourself, especially, because you've mentioned about the media, and you've mentioned about investors. But why is it, do you think that they are reluctant to work with these federations most of the time? Is it because, like you did mention earlier on, most of the federations can be quite chaotic at times? So maybe, what do you think the federations and, you know, such federations and all uh, shareholders, stakeholders in sports, maybe what do you think their role should be in ensuring that indeed, even these corporates, because the most important part is the investment. So what do we do? What do the, what does the Federation do to ensure that the sport is actually attractive to this investor, for the investor to come and pump in money? I don't think the Federation can do anything. Mm -hmm. It's our government. Mm -hmm. as simple as simple and clear. Commercialized sports. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because let us look at England, EPL. Look at the US, NBA. We have NBA, NFL, and NHL, and uh, the Super League. We don't have, in the US, we don't know the Cabinet Secretary for Sports, mm -hmm. right? In the UK, we don't know the Cabinet Secretary for Sports. They are there, but they work in, they work in conjunction with the Ministry of Sports, or Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. so that Theirs is to see the curriculum in the schools and put and insert sports in those curriculums in schools. These other leagues are run by professionals in terms of this is like a company, you run the league, make revenue, pay taxes to the government. That's it. Mm -hmm. Commercialized sports. Commercialization of sports. Yes. Man, Humphrey, I really did wish we had more time for this conversation. We've had quite the same conversations, but there are different points, of course, arising, and hopefully we can get to talk about that um, sometime later. But for now, maybe in regards to Kenyan basketball, just to the viewers, maybe to the basketball fans, as closing remarks, of course, what can you tell them about, you know, the support that is needed from them by the Morans, by local basketball, even here in Kenya? Uh, first of all, we need to congratulate the Morans for mm getting us back on stage after 28 years. 1993, I was a small boy. I think I was 11 years. Um, at this moment, um, it is time that whatever differences we have as a basketball stakeholders, we put them aside. Morans is not for basketball, it's for, for all of us Kenyans. Mm -hmm. In terms of development, let us go back on the drawing board and make sure that this Pace that the Moran have said, we don't step back. Actually, we need to move forward. We need now, we have qualified for the Afro qualifiers. For the Afro, now we need to focus on the World Cup qualifiers. Mm -hmm. So now we are setting our standards high. So we need to, as a federation, as a basketball stakeholders, we need to hold hands, everybody, even the media, the corporate, and there is something that we forgot to say. Mm -hmm. We have the national team board that has played the, in, the very important aspect of the Morans, the aspect of sourcing funds and making sure that this team is together, bringing the players who are not here. We need to keep it up and we need to work with them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Humphrey Mugendi, of course. And we sure do hope that we're going to see everything come to fruition, especially when it comes to the line of succession for this Morans team.
And once again, congratulations to the Morans, of course, on such a perfect fit. After 28 years, that indeed is a big deal. And for the viewers, don't worry. In the subsequent bulletins, we shall be giving you an update on when, of course, we can expect the Morans back in the country. Of course, we are sure that most of you want to hear from, you know, the team that, you know, brought us the glory. We have a long way to go still, but it is something. And at this point... We are going to take it. Well, don't go too far because we'll resume with another conversation, last conversation, uh, before we wind up today's edition of Sports Check. See you shortly.